Hey everyone, Morgan here for Simple Networks and in today's video we're going to build out a brand new network for this Airbnb rental house using TP-Link Omada. It's going to include both indoor and outdoor Wi-Fi coverage, so be sure to stick around. Before we get too far into the video, full disclosure, TP-Link did provide all of the networking equipment you will see in this video to the channel free of charge. That being said, any opinions or comments you hear from me regarding the equipment are of my own. Let's get started. Let's take a quick look at what TP-Link sent us for this project. For Wi-Fi, they sent us their EAP653 Wi-Fi 6 indoor access point. They also sent us an outdoor access point, the EAP610. For the router gateway, we got the Gigabit VPN ER605, and for the switch, we got the TLSG208P Jetstream switch, which has four power over Ethernet ports. In terms of location, I decided that at least for now, the main network hub would reside in this cabinet that's built into the wall. And this will probably change in the future, but for now, just to get this set up and working as kind of a proof of concept, this will be just fine. I enlisted the help of our resident handyman, Busy Mike, and we began setup. The first step was to run coax from the basement up through the bottom of the cabinet. We got super lucky as there happened to be a pipe running up through the wall behind the cabinet with just enough room to stick the cable through, so we only ended up needing to drill one hole uh, in the cabinet to get the coax to the modem, which was excellent. We also decided to drill a second hole in the top of the cabinet to run Ethernet out of for one of the wireless access points, but more on that later. Now onto the networking hardware itself. Originally we had planned on mounting the equipment with screws, but the router, switch, and controller ended up being so light that we decided to go with industrial strength Velcro tape instead. That way I can pull the equipment off the wall for maintenance or if I decide to move it in the future, and it doesn't leave a bunch of permanent holes or screws in the cabinet. Now on to wireless, the placement of these APs was very important because we were going for full coverage both inside and outside the house with just these two access points. We're going to use the meshing capabilities of the Omada system to achieve that, so we need to make sure that the indoor access point was close enough to the back of the house so that it can get a good signal out to the outdoor access point. Mounting the outdoor access point also went as expected. I chose to mount on the outside of the old garage because that would allow us to easily power the access point with the included PoE adapter from one of the sockets inside the garage. Within about five minutes of powering up the outdoor access point, it was recognized in the controller automatically and I was able to adopt it and pair it to the indoor access point with no issues. This is certainly one of my favorite things about the Omada ecosystem so far. Once all of the devices were adopted, I set up two additional networks on top of the default LAN. One set aside for IoT devices like our Google Nest thermostat uh, and the Roku, and one for guests who will be renting out the house. Then I set up some basic firewall rules to make sure that devices on the guest network and the IoT network are not able to touch any of the TP-Link devices. Once everything was confirmed to be working, all that was left was to tidy up a bit. I started by using some cable staples to fasten the access point's ethernet cable to the wall, and honestly I'm not happy at all with how this looks. I think it looks tacky for lack of a better term. Um, so I'm definitely going to be installing some cable molding that is closer to the color of the wall uh, that will conceal the cable entirely. I think that'll be a much better idea, but for now it will do. All right, so this has been quite the project, but we are done, at least with the first phase. So let's go around and look at what we've got. So here's what we've got going on in the cabinet. We've got the cloud controller, the Jetstream switch, as well as the router gateway. This is not its, you know, permanent form. There's definitely some changes I want to make, but this will definitely do just fine for now so that the first set of guests who are coming in have internet access and everything like that. There are some things I'd like to change. Um, I'd like to get some better cables. I was just kind of using cables I had left over right now. You can see that orange cable is strained a little bit. Um, and I also want to re-terminate this uh, gray cable right here as the sleeve is starting to separate from the actual 8P8C connector there. And we've tacked up the wire that goes to the access point just to make it look a little nicer. And there's all the extra stuff bunched up in the corner and it goes out through the hole in the top we've drilled. So let's take a look at that access point. 
The wire kind of runs right along here. Like I said earlier in the video, I'm not super happy with that. Obviously it looks pretty, it looks better than just hanging there for sure, but uh, it just, I don't know, kind of looks shoddy. So I'm definitely gonna get some cable molding uh, to tidy that up a bit. But it comes down here to the EAP 653, which is doing a fantastic job. We've got decent coverage all over the house and really good coverage on the ground floor, which is most important as there are no TVs or anything like that in the upstairs of the house. And here is the EAP 610 outdoor all wired up. I really like this access point. You should definitely check out the uh, video I made uh, specifically for this access point. I will link that down in the description. Um, but it's, it's a really good performer. So you can see what we did here is basically I just mounted it to the door frame of the garage here. And it comes with all the little seals and everything necessary to make it watertight. And then I just ran the cable into the garage and did a little, well, a lot of uh, silicon sealant here just to make sure that no water or bees or anything like that got in there. Should probably cut those tags off to make it look a little nicer, uh, but it's been working fantastic the past few days. All right, so that is it for now. I hope you enjoyed uh, coming along on our little network deployment here for this Airbnb rental house. A big thank you to TP-Link for providing us all the equipment we needed for this project. And be sure to stay tuned as I've got more TP-Link Omada videos coming. And be sure to check out the last TP-Link Omada video I did, which will uh, show up in um, a little preview somewhere on the screen. So again, thanks for watching. If you got any questions, put them down in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next one.